I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and as you can see in today's video, we're going to be doing something with trunking because I already have the show interface trunk command running on switch 1. Switch 1 has two physical connections to switch 2, and we should be trunking across each one. You can see here on the local switch, we're using ports fast Ethernet 011 and 012. Trunking mode is in desirable or dynamic desirable. Encapsulation is .1Q, the status good for us, they're both trunking, and the native VLAN is VLAN 1. So we've got all the defaults here, and at this time I only have the one default VLAN running, and that's VLAN 1. And we'll verify here with show VLAN brief. You can run show VLAN, and that's going to give you a lot more information, but for our purposes right now we just want to see that we just do have the one default VLAN. So let's go over to switch 2. Let's go to switch 2. There we go. And we're going to run show interface trunk. Same thing we just saw on switch 1. You can see we're even using the same ports for the connections, the physical connections between the two. And we'll run show VLAN brief and see the exact same thing you can see. And I'll scroll over a bit here that we have many more ports on this particular switch. We've got 24 ports on this switch but they are all in the default VLAN of VLAN 1. And one thing I really like about Cisco Switch is if you forget to do something, the switch is going to try to help you out or the router will try to help you out. And in this case, let's say that I want to put this particular port into VLAN 23. I'm going to change it to an access port first off, which is a member of one VLAN and one VLAN only. And then switch port access VLAN 23. And note I get a message, access VLAN does not exist creating VLAN 23. Well that's great, you know, I, I've, I didn't create the VLAN before I put the port in it so the switch did it for me. Really appreciate that. Now, let's run show VLAN brief, spelling it correctly, and you can see that we have VLAN 23, port 02 is in VLAN 23, everything's fine. So we're going to go over to switch 2 and run the same command and you'll see there's no mention of VLAN 23 here. Now you may think that's no big deal, but we need our switches to have a like view of the network, especially the more switches we have because we have two in this particular practice pod, but you could have many more switches and most likely you will. And even if a switch doesn't have ports in a particular VLAN, it may need to know about the existence of that VLAN to correctly forward frames. So even though we don't have a port, a port in VLAN 23 on the switch, we'd still like the switch to know about it and know about it dynamically. Because you and I as network admins, we've got a lot of work to do. And if we have a 50 switch network, and we create a VLAN on one particular switch and we want all the other switches to know about that VLAN, we don't want to tell net to every switch and type in VLAN 23. We don't want to do that. We want this to happen dynamically and we do that with VTP, the VLAN trunking protocol. I'm going to look at a couple of options here. I'm not going to use all of them in this particular video. But the one we're interested in right off the bat is the domain choice. Set the domain of the VTP administrative domain. It makes sense, but it's worth repeating that in VLAN trunking protocol, for your devices to correctly exchange VLAN information, they have to be in the same domain. So we're going to make that VTP domain CCNA. You see a little message there changing VTP domain name from null to CCNA. So when you have it as null, then you know that you didn't have one set to begin with. We may already see over here, yep, it's already in CCNA. The other switch let this one know about it, so should be, and remember, v, show VTP status. This is really your number one VTP troubleshooting and verification command. And now we'll run show VLAN brief. And you can see that Switch 2 now knows about VLAN 23. There are no ports in it yet, and we may not put any in there, but generally you want your switches to know about all the VLANs on the network, even if they don't have ports that are members of that particular VLAN. We have um, three modes in VTP. Let's take a look at those. And like I said, always use iOS help 
when you are working in a home lab especially because you get to see a lot of great options you might not see on the job. VTP mode, we have client, server, and transparent. And the one I want to show you right now is client. Because what was it by default? Did you notice that? By default, let's take a look. VTP operating mode server. That is the default. I can create, modify, and delete VLANs on a VTP server with no problem. But I can't do that on a client. I can't create or delete them. So let's take a quick look then. That's the command to make a device a client. And you can see setting device to VTP client. Well, that's fine. Let's go back over to the first switch and just create another VLAN. We'll just call it VLAN 100. We won't put any v, uh, ports into it. And now on the client, you'll see VLAN 100 almost immediately. And again, no ports in it yet, but the switch does know about it. What if I try to create a VLAN right here? What's going to happen? I get a message, a very helpful message, that says VTP VLAN configuration not allowed when device is in client mode. So while you are definitely going to get a reminder of that rule from the switch, in a lab environment or a production environment, an exam is probably not going to give you that reminder. So it's a good idea to keep that in mind that a client switch in VTP is not going to be able to create, delete, or modify that particular VLAN. We will look at the transparent mode in a future video. Hope you enjoyed this particular video on VTP. I want to invite you out to the website www.thebryantadvantage.com. Over 250 free Cisco fully illustrated tutorials, plenty of videos like this which are also available on YouTube, and plenty of free practice exams as well. If you'd like to go straight to the tutorials page, you can just put tutorials.htm right there at the end. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the website.